everybody, welcome to today's session. This is a pre-recorded session watching live. So I am in the chat over there on the right and there might be some other people here. And today we're gonna look at Canvas in particular things that are new into Canvas in the last several weeks. Now, Canvas pushes updates every month and sometimes they're worth talking about. Other times it's just stuff that kind of happens in the background or little cleanups that make it a little bit easier to use. But today I wanna to show some of the bigger changes that have come and not only show them to you, but talk through why they're important and talk through why you should consider using some of these changes or taking advantage of some of these changes in your course. Now I'm running inside of uh, Canvas as a teacher right now, and I'm gonna be jumping back and forth in between student view and teacher view. So I'll try and make sure I'm calling out when I'm where. I'm also running inside what's called the beta instance. And this is where you can log into Canvas and see some of the stuff that's coming, but it's not in your normal classes yet. So uh, you're gonna see a pink bar jump up across the bottom and I'll try and close it as much as I can. But all it means is that I'm running in this kind of sandbox test area where things might not work right or none of the data we add or change is gonna be saved, but that's okay. It's not something I'm worried about right now. So I'm in a demo course, you can see uh, I'm in the teacher view right now. There's the normal course template here for each month. I've got an assignment as a student. And the first tool I wanna show you is uh, actually buried in the settings. Now, if you've ever been in the situation where uh, your students log in, so I'm actually gonna jump into student view and you think you've got everything right. Maybe it's a new semester, we just rolled over, you're updating assignments or links or whatever, or maybe it's gonna be in the fall and you're getting your course ready and you think everything looks good, but when your students come in and they click the button for that day's assignment and then they get, oh no, the page has been disabled for this course. What does that mean? Why is that page, it's linked, I've got it linked, why isn't it working? That's because sometimes links break. It could be you deleted an assignment. It could be that you have changed a link, but you grabbed the wrong one. So how do we fix that? There's a tool in your settings. So I'm back in the teacher side now. Man, that bar drives me crazy. So there's a tool in your settings and it's called validate links in content so this guy right here so on and if your screen smaller it'd be at the bottom of the page but i'm going to go to this validate links in content and this is a little utility tool when you run it the first time it's going to give you a list of stuff that could be broken so you can see right here on my calendar template i've got deleted content referenced all over the place so as a teacher when you're preparing your course or when you're updating your course or building your course, this is a good place to come and you just click the button and you can walk away or switch tabs or do whatever because it takes a second to run. But what it does is it goes through every single item in your course and it checks any link you have to something else. And what it's gonna do is give you this report where you can then go in and say, all right, my calendar template, I gotta get rid of some of these links. And it gives you that checklist to make sure that everything is up to date. So it's nothing students ever see, but it improves the student experience because they never run into that issue of I clicked on the link you gave me. So think about as you're coming up or as you're reviewing your courses or uh, getting ready to clean them up for whatever using this tool. So again, we get to that in the settings and then you do the validate link uh, validate links and content and it will give you that little report about things that could be broken in your class and it saves you some frustration later in the day. The next tool or the next tip I want to give for this particular uh, th this particular video is in my assignments. When we are creating assignments, I did a video of oh man, several weeks ago now about why you should give unlimited attempts on assignments. It has to do with uh, students getting feedback and using the feedback cycle to drive what they're doing. So I encourage you to go take a look at that video and how you can use rubrics to give the feedback and allow students multiple attempts because we're driving for learning, we're not just driving for completion. So Canvas has added a tool. Uh, I've got an assignment set up already and I'm about to jump into student view so we can take a look at it. But this assignment is just a text entry. There's nothing fancy about it. Uh, the only catch is you have to have a due date. Now, when you're doing this for a course, of course you're gonna have a due date, but this is in particular, you gotta have a due date and you need to make sure your assignments are multiple attempts allowed. If you limit your attempts, this particular tool that I'm about to show you isn't going to work. And again, you get into completion versus everything else and you can always, uh, get around it, but it's more work on you in the long run. So again, that might 
generic assignment, it has a due date, and I have multiple submissions enabled. So I'm going to jump into student view. And when this loads, if you've never taken a look at what the student view looks like now on an assignment, they have this new kind of workflow tracker. So A, the assignment's available. And right now I'm doing the upload portion, or, and I kind of, I actually kind of wish this said something different, but it'd be confusing with submit. So this tracks where the student is in the process. So remember so maybe a year ago, students would do the work, but they would never submit the work. This is now a visual indicator for students. They can also go and see previous attempts before you couldn't see previous attempts. But now with this update coming, students will be able to go back and look at any attempt on an assignment that they have submitted so they can keep track of their growth. So my assignment details are here and attempt one, it tells me right here, it's text entry and I'm going to start my entry. And so notice my, my indicator now is still, I'm on step two out of four. So I'm going to put this is my response. And then I can hit save. So now again, visual cues, if I don't know what that third bubble means, I can scroll back up and it's gonna expand back out. I have not submitted this assignment yet, but I can come down and I can edit so I can save my progress. So this is an improvement because students may wanna start an assignment, but then they run out of time or they're changing courses or they're leaving to go to the dentist, whatever it happens to be, they just hit save and I can come back and continue to edit this thing. And it reminds me, hey, you haven't submitted yet, but let's say I'm done. So I'm gonna hit submit. So my attempt is summarized down here. I can also throw a comment in once I submit. I did the best I could. LOL. And then I'm gonna send my comment. So for a student, it's a little bit easier to see what they put in and then what comments they're leaving. So I can see that test student comment down here. So as a student, now I know it's not graded. So that's the last step. As a student, it's not my job now. I've done it, I've submitted the assignment, and I'm just waiting on the staff. Because I can put a second attempt in, uh, it's a multiple a submission assignment, I can start a new attempt right here and just put another one in at my own prerogative. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna say, all right, I've done it, I did the best I could, and great. So now I'm gonna leave student field. Well, let's go back as a teacher and see what this looks like. Now, up until this actually comes out on the 20th, so by next Monday, uh, when I wanted a student to redo an assignment, I would have to go to them and say, hey, I need you to go redo this thing, but it's just verbal. There's no way I can get it to go back on their to-do list because um, for Canvas, they've submitted, they're done, they've, it's off the list. This changes that. Uh, to get around that before, I would have to go in, edit my assignment, use assign two, give it to the kid, change the due date. It's, it's kind of a mess uh, to get it back on that to-do list. This is gonna simplify that process. So I've got a student, I have a response. It's obviously not where I want it to be. So as a staff member, I can say, I'd like you to submit this again, please. Once I give that feedback, there's a new button in the speed grader that says reassign assignment. And what I can do is when I click this, it now goes back on that student's to-do list. This attempt still exists. It still is there in the log. But if I go back into my student view on this assignment, I can see my comment back so the staff comment comes back. I'm prompting the student to do it again. I can't, I can no longer edit attempt number one. I can't change what this one is, but I can come up and do new attempt. And that's because I happen to be there. Now, if I go, if I log back into my home screen, take a look at this. This to do item is updated again. The due date is the same. I didn't have to create a second assignment as a teacher. I didn't have to go and create this custom thing. I didn't have to make a subsequent assignment. I can just reassign it back to that student. And then I can, again, see, I can see my response. Let's go ahead and resubmit. And then the process continues from there. So using this tool, if I do new attempt, let's do another one. It tells me I'm in attempt number two right now. This is my second attempt. I can save and then submit. 
So as a student, I can go back and I can look at my first attempt versus my second. When I leave the student view, again, as a staff member, now you're re-notified that this assignment has been submitted again. So if I go back into my speed grader, we can take a look at my sidebar. So again, test student is selected. Here's my second attempt. It shows you the most recent. I can change to the first one or the previous one and see what the, that whole history was. But it's, again, I could then leave them feedback. You can't reassign it until you've given them feedback. But once you give that feedback, you could either reassign it or score it or move on. And again, powered with a rubric or paired with a rubric, this becomes really, really powerful. Your workflow doesn't change. You don't have to keep modifying assignments and adding students. You can continue to reassign them to that thing and you bounce back and forth and it prompts them to do that resubmission. It prompts them to submit something better based on your feedback. So really power up your, your feedback using rubrics and really specific comments. Use your media comments. Don't forget, you can record a video of yourself giving them feedback. You can also record um, speech to text. So if you're giving a lot, you can turn this on and it'll transcribe for you into the box. So this is a new tool. It'll be available starting on the 20th, so you'll see it pop up in your course. Um, but that's how it works, and that's the benefit of it is, again, we're driving for feedback. We're driving for students to submit better, not just complete it, but to really think about what they're doing. Now, those are the two biggest updates for March. So again, this is a pretty short video, but looking back at some of the other things that we've talked about with Canvas, think about how your interaction with students can change taking advantage of some of these tools. If you wanna play with it, hop into student view. It won't affect anything. You just got that test student there. Uh, if, it, if you don't wanna see it, in your gradebook or you want to get rid of all those extra submissions remember you can use reset student down here and that will erase the student's progress so once it erases it will boot me back if i click it again once it erases it'll boot me back to the home page as if i were a student who was entering the course for the first time there's no submission history your speed grader doesn't have anything in it you don't have any notifications that kind of stuff so Hopefully that's helpful. If you have questions or thoughts, please leave a comment below. Get in touch with us on, uh, via email or uh, through our website, or you can go to the blog and leave a comment there. There's a lot of ways to get in touch with us. Um, we're going to keep looking for things that are coming in Canvas that are helpful to you and make sure we get some information out. Uh, thanks for watching today. Again, stay in touch. If you need more help, let us know what, you, what kinds of stuff you'd like to see for Canvas, and we'll get it out to you. Thanks.